As the impact of the ruling unfolds, we're taking a closer look at the original 1864 law and why it had been established in the first place. Historians say it came about as male physicians tried controlling health care. Joining us now to discuss it is Jennifer Holland. She is a U.S. history professor at the University of Oklahoma specializing in gender, race, and sexuality. Jennifer, thank you so much for coming. This was established as gender bias in the first place. Somebody decided they wanted all men to have all control over women's reproductive rights in 1864, right? Yes, um, this is one law in many past across the country um, that's changing abortion laws in places like Arizona and really all over the country. Before this, abortion was legal um, in most places up until a period called quickening and when a woman could feel a fetus move and only a woman could decide, right, whether that had occurred yet. And so this law is like one of many that says, no, women can't decide that. Um, doctors know and legislatures know, and that moment begins at conception. And the only reasonable abortion is one that saves the life of the mother. This may be worse than the dissolution of Roe v. Wade because that law was banned when Roe v. Wade became a law. And then now they're bringing it back now that Roe v. Wade is no more. Yes, yes. There, the 1960s in Arizona, even though abortion was illegal then, there was a lot of upheaval in that moment from a variety of sectors, including the Arizona Medical Association, demanding, asking the legislature to change this law. They said this was not an ethical law in a modern legal system, that Arizonans and Americans had seen what kinds of tragedies came from illegal abortions, both in their everyday lives, huge numbers of people were accessing illegal abortions, and increasingly on the news, they saw people who had to leave, Arizonans who had to leave the state, leave the country in order to get, um, in order to get abortions in very tragic circumstances. In 1864, when they put this, um, you know, the law into place, midwives used to give abortions, but then obstetricians, male obstetricians got a little jealous and upset and they wanted to take control, so that's when this congressman came in and said, hey, let's, let's put this one into law so men have control. Now, it was a ripple effect when that started, though, right? Because then every, across the country, that's when everyone started looking at the abortions as being a, a bad thing. Yes, in fact, this was state by state. Really, there was no, by the early 20th century is really when you start seeing every state have this. But New Mexico, right nearby, held on to the old quickening doctrine, didn't have this Arizona law until the 20th century. But it was a ripple effect over 50 years. Now, if this law is, um, if someone goes against this law, if, if, if a, a, um, a doctor or somebody breaks this law, they could get two to five years in prison, also supplying the instruments, right? Right. Yes. I, the, um, the Arizona district attorney has said that they that she's not um, prosecuting this law. But if it does go into effect and it is prosecuted, that would be the outcome that you would have abortion providers and people who aid abortion um, would be up for for prison sentences, as they are in a number of states already in this country. So this is a major hot button issue in the 2024 election. Yes, yes. I think that we've seen in state by state through referendum, huge popular uprisings demanding more ethical and more just abortion laws that acknowledge that this is this is health care, health care that's been a, a major part of um, Americans' lives and a legal part for 50 years. All right. Thank you, Jennifer Holland from the University of Oklahoma. Not going to be even mentioned that the American Medical Association was founded for that very reason, too. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Take care.